about to leave Already packing Come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see The world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get away This is what we waited for Good evening, everyone. It's Jim here at Tutor Tutor. Welcome to the latest in our series of live GCSE Geography uh, live streams, study revision sessions designed to cover some core ideas, con core content that will hopefully underpin uh, success for students in their assessments and mocks and maybe even also the final exams next summer. And this is our fourth in our series. So welcome to everyone who's joining us live. I can see from the screen lots of students joining us live you get a chance to engage in tonight's activities in the live chat window. Last week, we had almost 700 students also watch us on catch up or replay. So if that's you, welcome to. You'll get a chance to pause the video, if you wish, to give yourself a bit more time. No live chat, but uh, hopefully you'll get just as much out of these activities as our live audience. And I'm joined today by two familiar faces. We've got Vicky in the middle and Suzanne on the right. Hi. <laughs> never grow tired, though. Might be familiar, but never grow tired of uh, uh, <laughs> participating in your sessions. And it looks like another content activity filled session tonight. So we're not going to waste any more time other than to say hopefully everyone will enjoy it. Uh, Vicky, are you introducing it tonight or is it Suzanne? Yes. Whose turn is it? No, I'm, I'm kicking it off tonight. Um, so welcome to our uh, fourth session, like Jim said. This week we're looking at the river's long profile. We're going to think about how the river changes from source to mouth and some of the processes operating along the way. And we're also going to think about those cross-profile changes as well as you move downstream. So we're going to start off this evening with some altered vowels. These are all keywords that you should know and should have come across in the first uh, couple of lessons of your uh, river's unit of work. So... Um, you just need to pop the answers into the chat window. We'll give you a few moments for each one. Obviously, if you are watching on um, catch up, you can give yourself a little bit more time. So which so our vowels are incorrect. What should this word be? Let's have a look. 
Excellent. Well done, Isabel. So our first correct answer coming to that ch chat window it is the tributary. So small streams that join that main river channel. Um, second one up, please, Jim. OK, what do we think this one might be? I almost said this word a second ago, so I'm glad that I didn't. So let's give you a moment. What do you think this one is? Excellent. It is the drainage basin. Well done. So understand was the first person to get that one correct, although drainage basin doesn't start with F, but that's not, not a bad effort. So drainage basin, the area um, that one river and all its tributaries uh, drains. OK, our third one. This is always a tricky one. Um, students always seem to forget this word. So I'm really struggled to remember what this one is. So what do we think this one is? Um, and then bonus points if you can tell me what the key term actually means. While we've got a couple of moments just to work this one out, I've got a question just coming up in the chat saying, can we have a look at CBD as this is something that I struggle on? After the half term, we're actually going to start with human topics and we are going to look at urbanisation as our first topic then. So we'll probably have something about the CBD in there. Uh, well done, Isabel. It is a confluence and you are also correct. It is a point where two rivers meet. Excellent work. Right. Fourth one up, please, Jim. OK, so it should be a slightly easier one. I thought if a uh, confluence is going to be really tricky. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> so what do we think this one might be? So two terms that we put together here. Just give you a couple of moments. OK, to give you a clue, it's where the river starts and the river ends. And again, well done, Isabel. You are beating everyone tonight. It is source and mouth. So the source where the river begins and the mouth where the river meets the sea. So our last one is hopefully on the screen. Excellent. So we've got a couple more moments just for you to work out this last one. Some good answers coming through from source and mouth. Well done, Tony. It's excellent geography there. OK, what do we think this one might be? Come on, Isabel, let's see if you can beat everyone. Eh, and you have. Well done. So Isabel is right with the watershed. So it's the area of high land that separates two drainage basins. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand over to Suzanne now to just run through what we're going to cover in this evening session. Thank you, Vicky. OK, so we need to know about the long profile. So you can see there the long profile we'll be looking at the journey that the water creates in the river channel when it's observed from the source, which is the beginning, as you've just heard, to the mouth, which is the end of the river where it meets the sea. And you'll need to be focusing on the gradient and how it changes and how the long profile can be divided into the upper, middle and lower course. And you'll be hearing more about that in a little while. We also look at the shape of the river valley. So that's the side to side view of the river channel. So where the water is actually flowing and also its valley. Um, and as you move downstream from the upper, middle and then to the lower courses, you'll actually have changes in those um, characteristics of the cross profile. So it will look different in each of those different stages down the long profile as it becomes wider and deeper. We'll also, you can see the third point there, be looking at the processes of erosion and transportation and their role in the creation of the river channel cross profile as well. And we'll have a little look at deposition. And finally, you can see we'll be mentioning some of the distinctive landforms which vary downstream from all of those fluvial processes, that erosion and deposition. And we'll be having a look at what they look like in the upper course, the middle course and the lower course. Right, I think that is me done and back over over to you, Vicky. Thank you very much. So we're going to start off looking at the fluvial processes of erosion. So erosion simply just means that by it's processed by where the river wears away the land. And if you've done coast quite recently, those processes are very well, they're the same. So it's kind of revision for both of them. So the ability of a river to erode depends on its velocity. And there are four different processes of erosion that operate along that river. Now, what we're going to do before we start talking about them in detail is we're going to see whether you know which ones are which. So we're going to start off with a 60 second challenge where you are going to match up the letters 
with the numbers on the right. So we have th uh, five definitions, five key terms. You just need to match them up. So we're going to have 60 seconds on the clock. You are going to pop the letters and the numbers into the chat window for me. So let's see, uh, boys, if we can beat Isabel this time. Um, off we go, Jim. So down the side, we have erosion, hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition, and solution. Okay. Okay, if you were watching on playback, obviously you can give yourself a little bit more time. Just pause the video to give yourself a few more moments just to get these done. It's quite a lot to do in 60 seconds. At the moment, understand it's in the lead with two correct answers before anybody else. However, I think Isabel has just pipped at the bottom with all of the answers matched up. So let's just have a look at the correct answers on the screen, please, Jim. Super. So we've already said, I've already given you the definition of erosion. It's simply the wearing away of the riverbank or bed by the flow of the water. So our first one is hydraulic action, which is the force of the water hitting the riverbank and squeezing the air into the cracks in the rock, and it weakens them inside. Okay, this is... Um, you know, you've got to have fast flowing water here to be creating hydraulic action. And again, if you're thinking about comparing it to the coasts when we're talking about erosion, it's caused by those big destructive waves. OK, C2, abrasion. This is a force of sediment and rocks in the water, scratching and scraping away at the riverbank and bed. So as the water is travelling along, it will take it will pick up with it lots of sediment and, and small bits of material which it will carry along. This will scratch and it will scrape away. It's a bit like the force of sandpaper, really. Um, D1 is attrition. This is a process of rocks hitting each other, breaking smaller rocks as they're being transported along. So they either do two things. You can either break off those sharp edges with, um, with this process, or they just bang together and they, as they hit each other, they, they break up into smaller bits. And finally, we have solution, okay, E5, chemical reaction between the river water and the minerals in the rock and in the riverbed or bank, which causes a rock to dissolve. Jim, can we have the next slide up, please? So we've got these in more detail on this screen. So again, if you are watching this on playback, you can download these slides and keep them into your notes. So we've already said that the sh uh, hydraulic action, that sheer force of that fast flowing water hitting the riverbanks and beds, forcing water into those cracks, which compresses the air in the rock and it weakens that rock from the inside. And this causes vertical erosion in the middle course, which is uh, downward erosion, lateral erosion in the middle course, which is a uh, going outwards so horizontal and that's especially on those fast flowing when that fast flowing water hits the outside bend of a meander and this leads to meander migration in that in that middle course okay we talked about abrasion we just said the small boulders and stones are being transported to the river they scratch and scrape that river bank and bed as they move along and we've i'm also mentioned that those stones that have recently fallen into the river are quite angular they're quite sharp and jagged um they are particularly good for abrasion they will scrape that bought that uh, the riverbed along quite nicely as they move along and ongoing abrasion is responsible for both vertical and lateral lateral erosion can I have the next slide up please Jim thank you and then we have our last two processes so attrition we talked about those stones being carried along by the river they collide with each other and as they do that the jagged edges will be knocked off and they will be smoothed out but they will also smash into smaller stones which then will be eroded further and they will become smoother over time and then in with in terms of solution hopefully from science we know that solution involves dissolving um, dissolving something so we have co2 in the atmosphere which dissolves in that river to form a weak acid as this travels along it reacts with the rocks in the riverbed and banks and it causes a chemical reaction which is going to cause parts of the riverbank and bed to dissolve and this is particularly um, prevalent in chalk and limestone riverbeds 
Okay, Jim, can we have the next slide up? And we've mentioned vertical and lateral erosion, so I thought it was just worth sort of recapping what those are. So vertical erosion is that deepening of the, high, of the riverbed, mainly by hydraulic action. It happens most in the upper course, so it is something at least of V-shaped valleys, for example. And lateral erosion is that sideways erosion that wears away the riverbanks, happens mostly in the lower course, so you can see that on the diagram there, and that's what leads to meander migration. Thank you very much. So I'm going to hand back over to Susanna, who's going to talk to you about transportation. Thank you. OK, so here we have a look at some of the fluvial processes of transportation. Now, this is the process by which the river carries its load. And if you're actually to travel along the long profile from the source to the mouth, you'd actually see that the particle size differs as in both its size and its angularity or smoothness from the source, which is we find in the upper course, which would be very large angular boulders, which have been newly weathered from the valley sides. And as we move down, the particle size will become smaller, finer and more rounded until it finally becomes silt in suspension in the lower course. Right now, I think the next slide is a new game. I'm very excited about this. I've never played this one before, so I'm hoping we, know, <laughs> we, we, we have fun with this one. So it's don't draw the short straw. So what you need to do, you can see here, is there are going to be four possible answers to do with fluvial processes of transportation. You need to decide which of them is the third ranking item. So this is the third, um, the third I, I guess, the third largest um or the third one there we go <laughs> that makes more sense so what you've got to do is which one of these would finish third would it be suspension saltation solution or traction so into the um chat box can you now decide which one you think would finish third out of those four so just put the name of the type of transportation so I'm waiting to see who can who can get the first one on my chat box. And obviously, if you're um, playing on catch up, um, you can maybe even look them up if you can't remember what they are. Oh, I've got an answer coming in. Isabel, you're very fast tonight. Well done. OK, we'll see in a minute if you're right. Anyone else going to challenge Isabel? Give it a go. Put something in. Yay, we got some. We got a challenge. Right, Jim, should we see what the answer is? So if you have got suspension, give yourself four marks. So Isabel, one, well done to you. Um, and I'm going to be going through all of these, but this is the very small particles of sand or clay suspended in the water. So they can settle um, so the water looks clear. And actually you can do it if you ever get to go to a river, take a cup of water and just let it settle for 10 minutes and you'll actually see all the little bits of um, sand or clay will um, settle down in the bottom of your cup. You can see there's saltation, you get two points, small stones and pebbles being bounced along, solution I'm afraid, zero points for that, so I'm really sorry Kian, um, and that's when we have material being dissolved in the water, it's invisible, doesn't colour the water, it's those chemical changes, and finally one mark if you've got traction. So that's where heavy rocks and boulders are rolled along the riverbed. We're going to go into those in a little bit more detail next. Lovely. Jim, could I have the next slide? Wonderful. So here we go. Here are the um, four different fluvial processes of transportation. I can see Vicky's got some lovely diagrams there. are going to be really <laughs> useful. Um, so first of all, traction. Now, this is the process by which the really large boulders and rocks are actually rolled along the riverbed. This is the bed load here is too large to be carried by the current of the river. So they're too heavy. So therefore, they are rolled along. And obviously, that's going to lead to quite a bit of abrasion. Um, this is most commonly found near the source of the river and really only occurs when the river is in high flood. So it's not happening all the time necessarily. The next one down there, saltation. I like this one because I think it lo they look like little froggies jumping along. This transportation process is where the stones and pebbles bounce along the riverbed and the load is alternately lifted and then dropped as the velocity of the river rises and falls. And the pebbles and stones are too large to be continually suspended by the river, but they're not large enough to be dragged along in traction um, as part of the bed load. 
Right, if we have the next slide, we've now got our suspension. This was the answer, wasn't it, for our straws game. Um, this transportation process is what happens to the really fine um, materials like silt um, or alluvium, which is held up and actually carried in the river's flow. They're very light and this fine material is often called the suspended load. And then finally, we've got there our solution. Now, sometimes you might see it referred to in textbooks or by your teacher's corrosion. And that's the dissolving where rocks have dissolved like chalks and chalk and limestone. And because it's a chemical change, as we saw, it was invisible. Um, and we call the load for this soluate, so, well, I'll say that again, <laughs> solute load. Right. And I think my final slide now is on deposition. Fantastic. Right. So deposition is a process by which the river drops its load. And that happens when there is a loss in velocity. Um, the larger bed load you can see there is deposited first as it needs very high velocity to roll them through traction. And the deposition continues down the river long profile. In the middle course, um, it becomes much shallower. Um, where there might be a um, meander bend um, and friction increases. So it means that they're much more likely to deposit material in the inner bend of a meander. That's on an asymmetric channel cross profile um, on the shallower side. You might have actually drawn one of those out um, at school. Um, and finally, the river does deposit the very finest set sediment that's carried in suspension at the very mouth of the river. And that's where the tidal current meets the river, slowing the flow right down um, and the suspended load um, is dropped, forming um, estuaries. OK, and we can see there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're going on. Right. Um, yes. So also you can see that sometimes at the base of a waterfall, um, some of the larger um, um, bed load can be deposited and actually works as um, abrasion and attrition in the plunge pools of waterfalls. Right. OK. Thank you, Jim. I think we are moving on now. Right. So. Uh Thank you, Suzanne. So we're going to have a look at the long profile now. And this basically just shows the gradient of the river as it travels down from source to mouth. And it can be split into those three sections according to the changing gradient. And you can see those on the graph um, on the screen. So we have the upper course that has a really steep gradient, the middle course with a gentle gradient and the mouth with a much more gentle gradient even still. So we're going to have a look at each three of these courses in a moment. But I just want to show you a model that some of you would have come across in your lessons. Not all of you will, but some of you will have seen this. So, Jim, can I have the next slide up, please? This is the Bradshaw model. You may have come across this and it is essentially a theoretical, sorry, a theoretical model that helps us describe those changes that we would expect to see as a river flows downstream. And it is shown as a series of triangles, as you can see on the screen. If the triangle widens downstream, it means that variable is increased. So we can see, according to that model, that as we move downstream, the channel depth, the channel width, the mean velocity, the discharge, and the volume of the load carried all increase as we move from source to mouth. If the if the triangles are getting smaller, that means that those variables decrease as we move from the source to the mouth. So load particle size, so that's the size of the material that is being transported. The channel bed roughness, so as you move down, the channel bed gets much, much smoother because of erosion. And the gradient, these all decrease as you move down from the source to the mouth, okay, which is what we perhaps would expect to happen. And we can see that those that decrease, those triangles are all tapering off because they get much, much smaller as we go. So let's have a look at the three courses in a bit more detail. So we're gonna start off with the upper course, okay? In the upper course, that's where our river starts. We've got a high relief, so quite hilly, we've got a steep gradient. That means the river has got lots of potential energy. So the water trickles, the trickles of the water from various streams merge to form rivulets. They will then coalesce and they will create a single channel or stream that will suddenly become a bit bigger. So in upland areas like the Lake District, you will quite often come across lots of streams that all then kind of, they're really small. You don't tend to notice them to begin with. They will all merge together to form slightly, something slightly bigger that's more noticeable. The erosion here 
is mainly vertical, that's mainly by hydraulic action. And the transportation here, we have large boulders being rolled down that river, it's mostly by traction. And the deposition, you have large angular material dropped, and again, those big boulders being dropped there. Okay, Jim, can we have the next slide up, please? So this is a middle course, and hopefully you will recognise the photograph on the on the screen, and you'll recognise that that is a big meander. So we've got big looping meander bends there. If you look closely, there's actually an Oxbow Lake on that, which used to be a bend of a meander. Um, so in the middle course, you've got much lower land and the gradient reduces significantly, but the channel gets deeper and it gets wider. There is a greater discharge of the river, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a few moments. And the tributaries coming in all bring additional water. So in terms of erosion here, we've got lateral sideways erosion into those valley sides. And this is mainly by abrasion and attrition. In terms of transportation, we've got smaller average particle sizes because you've got attrition taking place here, so they've eroded and they're quite small. That transportation is mainly through the form of suspension. It's a much smaller load than we had before. And deposition, there's lots of this, particularly on the inside of those meander bends, which are shallower. So that, that friction means that there is um, much less energy. Lots of deposition occurs on those inside bends. You've got to build up there. And then in our lower course, Jim, can we have the next slide? Thank you. The low line, we've got low line land here. The gradient, gradient is almost flat and the channel is extremely wide and it's extremely deep. So in terms of erosion, we have lateral erosion continuing, that sideways erosion still continues here. And the river is really powerful here because the velocity is greatest. And we will talk about why that is in a few moments. OK, there is there is no vertical erosion happening here. Transportation, we've got a large load, but it is tiny, tiny particles, mostly suspension, some solution. So quite often in terms of the river at the lower course, it quite often looks very, um, very brown. It's not necessarily really dirty. It's just carrying a huge amount of sediment with it. And the deposition that we get here is fine sediment. It's alluvium. Some of you will have heard of that. It builds up the floodplain when the river bursts its banks. It's also really fertile. So when it does burst its banks, covers a floodplain, it will deposit lots of silt there, which will be really good for farming eventually. Um, and deposition is actually our main fluvial process in this lower course of the river. So <clears throat> we, if we think about some of the... Um, some of the landforms that we find as we move from the upper to the middle to the lower course. We're in the upper course, we will find waterfalls, gorges, V-shaped valleys and interlocking spurs. In the middle course, that's meanders and oxbow lakes. And in the lower course, we're looking at levees, we're looking at floodplains, and we're thinking about estuaries and deltas. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test your knowledge of these three courses with a connection wall. So there are three groups of four. You need to find the connections for me. So the first thing that I would like you to do is identify the boxes with the features of the upper course first. So we've made a change to this uh, connection wall, which you, if you've seen our connection walls before, we've actually put um, letters and numbers down the side so you don't have to type so much into the chat window this time you can actually just put the coordinates of those boxes so we are looking for uh, features of the upper course so four boxes are to do with the upper course if you can have a quick look if you are watching on replay obviously you can pause this give yourself a little bit more time just give you a few moments to have a look which ones are to do with the upper course. Okay. So I'm gonna give you 20 seconds or so to try and get a couple of these in. Okay, well done, Isabel. So we've got some answers coming up first. Okay, you are correct with both of those, Isabel. Well done. Well done, Alice. You have one of you. You've got yours correct as well. It might be, if you're watching this on your phone at the moment, it might be quite difficult. I know some of you probably are doing that. You might want to watch it on replay um, on a laptop screen, something so you can actually see. Obviously, connection wall is quite difficult if you're if you're on a mobile device. Okay, well done, we've got some good answers coming through, excellent. 
So can we have the correct answers up? Thank you very much. So we've got large boulders rolled, we've got mainly vertical erosion, we've got large angular material deposited and steep gradients of the river has lots of energy. Excellent. So we're now looking for the uh, middle course features. Well done, Kian. They were all correct for the upper course. So we're now looking for the middle course features. What do you think? Again, we're doing the same thing. We're putting those letters and numbers into that chat window. Okay. Excellent. So some correct answers coming through. So Shanaki and Isabel both correct with your first answer so far. Okay, Alice, you are also correct. Well done. Okay, just give you, I'm going to give you another 10 seconds. Okay, Jim, can we have the correct answers, please? So we have that smaller particle size due to attrition, the deeper channels are the greater discharge and volume of water. We begin to erode laterally into valley size with lots of deposition, particularly on the inside of the middle, so, sorry, on the inside bends of those meanders. So our last one is obviously going to be the lower course where we've got the greatest discharge in velocity with a shallow gradient. We've got a large load, but tiny particles We've got the lateral erosion continuing and we have fine sediment drop, but it does build up the floodplain. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Suzanne, who's going to talk to you about the uh, channel um, cross profile and how that changes as we go down. Thank you. Right. So, yeah, the cross profile. This is actually a section or as you can see, a slice taken sideways across the river channel. Um, so when cross profiles are drawn of the upper, middle and lower courses, and you can see Vicky's lovely diagrams there, um, we can compare their shape looking at their width and their depth. And what we observe is that in the upper course, as you can see, A, um, the river channel is actually very narrow and it's also very shallow. When we move down to the middle course, you can see there B, um, the channel becomes wider and it becomes deeper and it's usually over a metre deep. Um, and then that's because of lateral erosion. So the lateral erosion that we've been talking about is making it um, wider. Um, we've got some vertical erosion going on because of um, some of the potential energy and also kinetic energy from the additional tributaries that have joined. And finally, and we can see the lower course, which is diagram C, the channel is much wider and can actually be over a kilometre wide. Some of them are far, far wider than that by the time they reach the um, sea. It is much deeper, although, as we heard before, vertical erosion is very limited, but it's because of the much larger discharge that is so deep as additional tributaries have actually joined the main river channel. Right, if we could go into the next slide, please. So we've got here um the um river's discharge increases downstream now discharge is actually the volume of water passing through a given point along the river which is measured in cubic meters per second and you can see the calculation there on the screen to calculate the um, discharge you have to find out what the cross-sectional area is now that's lots of fun because it involves going to a river and it involves welly boots and hopefully not getting too wet um, what you do there is you measure the width of the river and then at regular intervals you will measure the depth and then work out what the average depth is so this helps you calculate the discharge and in order, uh, sorry, in order to then, that's the cross-sectional area. And then in order to find out what the discharge is, you have to find out what the velocity is. So you either put in a orange or a cork and measure it over a specified distance to find out what the velocity of the river is. And if you times velocity by the cross-sectional area, you will get your discharge, which is meters cubed per second. OK, and it tells you there that one of the key reasons why the discharge increases, of course, as we move downstream, is that more and more tributaries 
tributaries are joining the main trip river channel so there's far more more water entering and it's increasing its volume okay next slide please okay so we can see here that the um the river's velocity actually increases as we go downstream um and that might seem obvious um, if you've observed a river upstream at the source and downstream, it might, sorry, I'll say that again, it might not seem obvious if you've observed a river upstream at the source and downstream near the mouth, because often we see kind of the white water or what of, of the upper course, and it perhaps looks a little bit like there is uh, more movement going on. But actually, a lot of that is a um, misconception because it's actually moving much, much faster. The velocity is much faster downstream. Um, and it's a difference between being very turbulent flow in the upper course and a, what we call a laminar flow in the lower course. So it's actually moving in a much straighter direction. So the velocity is much, um, much faster in the lower course. So you can see there that in the upper course, because the channel size is actually quite small, if you remember that picture, it was very narrow and shallow. There's actually a lot of friction with the bed and banks. If you want to measure it, it's called the wetted perimeter. And again, that involves using a tape measure and holding it down over different rocks um, underneath the water. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of friction um, and it slows the flow rate, it slows the velocity of the river. However, as we get to the lower courses, that river channel has got so much wider, so much deeper, if you remember diagram C. Um, so there's far less water in contact with the bed and banks. So the friction is very, very low. So the volume of water can go much more quickly because it's a more efficient channel shape. Um, it has a far greater efficiency, so much higher velocity. And as we saw in the Bradshaw model, when we looked at those different variables that altered, the bed roughness, so that's how kind of jagged edges or smooth edges it is at the, um, on the banks and the bed, is actually much, much smoother as we move down towards the mouth. Um, so that again reduces the friction, so increases the speed as we get closer to the mouth of the river. Right, I think, yep, yeah, okay, we're on valley cross profile now. So I like this one, I like drawing this on from an OS map. It's always quite fun to try this. Um, so this is a valley cross profile, and it, this time it shows not only the river channel, but it also shows the whole of the valley floor and the slopes up the side of the valley. Um, here we can see River A is our very narrow, shallow channel from the upper course. But at this time, we can see it located within its valley, and it's at the bottom of a very steep-sided, what we call a V-shaped valley. The river channel takes up almost all of the valley floor, um, and we're likely in a location like this to be able to see exposed rocks and scree slopes on the valley sides as the rock is being heavily weathered on those steep valley slides, mostly through freeze thaw weathering. And this often loosens material, which then begins to move downhill by gravity. So that's where those large angular boulders come from that we find in the upper course that can only be moved by traction in times of flood. Then we can see in the middle course, um, we've got a much wider valley. It begins to broaden out from Valley A. Um, it's got less steep sides. The river channel sits on a much flatter floodplain on the valley floor, as you can see there. So when it does flood, it will flood that small area either side of the river channel. And then finally, in diagram C, we can see that lower course where we really get towards the mouth of the river, where it begins to discharge into the sea. That lower course is a far, far wider and much deeper river with a huge floodplain on either side of the river channel. And again, as Vicky said earlier, that often is um, when, when the river floods, it drops that fertile alluvium, which is absolutely fantastic for farming um, because it's full of nutrients. Right, thank you. I think that one's done. So we're on to the next one. Right, so we've got some lovely true or false questions. So these are really easy. You can just pop your answer into the chat box or obviously if you're playing on catch up, you can just write them on a piece of paper. Um, right, so first one. Velocity is the volume of water passing through a given point along the river. Is this true or false? 
Remember, I've just talked to you about these things. So is it true or false? The volume of water passing through a given point. Seeing if we're going to get someone to be first here. Go on, you've got 50-50 chance of getting it right. Give it a go. Whoa, yeah, we got the first one. Well done. Right, anyone else want to try? Let's see. Be brave. Right, Jim, can we have a look at the answer, please? This is false, okay? Remember, what you're looking there is it's actually the discharge. Right, uh, question number two, please. Discharge increases downstream as tributaries join the main channel and so increase the river's volume. What do we reckon, true or false? Give it a go. Okay, we've got some answers coming in. Great stuff. Right, Jim, let's see this one. It is indeed true. So we've got all those tributaries joining. So more and more water joining the river channel. So it increases the volume. Fab. Right. Next question, please. OK. As river flows towards the mouth, its velocity increases, meaning it has greater power to erode. What do you reckon with this one? <laughs> you have been listening to him. Thank you. Right, he's going to go again. 50-50 chance on this one. Oh, you're not sure about this one, have you? Okay, let's see the answer, please, Jim. Okay, so this one is true. It has got a much higher velocity. Remember, there's um, the uh, river channel is much smoother. It's got greater efficiency. Right, okay, uh, next one please. Lateral erosion broadens out the river valley in the middle and the lower courses. What are we gonna go with here? Okay. <laughs> oh, great stuff, I've got some people coming through now. Well done, understand, Casey. Red, all right, I haven't seen new new person joined us right okay can i have the answer then please so yes of course it does lateral erosion remember is that kind of horizontal erosion so it makes the river valley much wider right i think that is the last one yes i'm over to exam gold with vicky thank you very much so we're just going to very quickly go through some exam practice so on the screen we have a photograph of some features of the River Cookmere in Sussex, which is a beautiful part of the world. Um, hopefully we recognise that it is a meander. So it's really common in your exam to be asked how to, ex to explain how a landform shown by a photograph was created by physical processes. So let's have a think about what we would, uh, how we, we would approach this question. So Jim, can I have the next slide up please? So we've been asked, like I say, if I repeat the question, we explain how the landform shown was created by, a phys by physical processes. We know that that landform is a meander, hopefully. So we need to think about what the landform is, where you would find it within the long profile of a river. Now, hopefully from this evening session, you know that that will be found in the middle course of that river. We need to know about the processes of erosion that are taking place. Be specific here. So which of the four processes are actually operating on those bends and we need to think about deposition at the same time obviously that's a really important part of meander formation we need to think about the speed of the flow of water close to those inner and outer bends and what the cross profile of that river channel actually looks like on a bend now if we go to the next slide you've actually got a diagram that shows the kind of that cross profile here so you can see that one side is much deeper than the other you've got that fastest flow where you have the deepest part of the river because you've got less friction there so again it is explaining how that landform was shown that meander was created by physical processes and it's a really good idea to try and picture that cross section through your through a meander in your head as you're writing your answer okay you can either so you know with questions like this you can actually use um use a diagram to help you explain that formation if you need to and that's quite you know that's credit worthy and that's a good thing if you're you know you need to get some of your ideas across 
So let's have just a look at the exam goal, the things that the examiner will be really looking for when they're marking your answer. They're going to want to know that you really understand that process, those processes involved in the, form the formation of a meander and those bends. And they're going to want to know how that might change in the future. OK, and the reason the way that you're going to show them that you understand how this landform will change in the future is by knowing where erosion and deposition take place and why they take place and what that's going to do to the shape of this for this landform as you move further down the river and as it changes over time. They are also going to want to know those specific type of erosion. These are level mark questions in order to get the top levels at five and six you need to have some good subject specific vocabulary in there some, some geographical words so just saying erosion is not going to be enough what types of erosion are actually taking place on that bend now it would be a good idea obviously not right now as we're watching this live but if you are watching this on catch up it would be a good idea to pause and give yourself six seven or so minutes to try and answer that question again these come up frequently in that paper one, that physical geography paper that you will sit first. Okay, Jim, we've got one last activity to do. It's a nice, easy categorise, 60 seconds to separate the key phrases into these two categories. We've got features of the upper course, features of the middle and lower course. I've popped the middle and the lower course together for this one. So we have meanders, floodplains, waterfalls, oxbow lakes, rapids, interlocking spurs, gorges and levees. I'm going to give you 60 seconds on the clock. You need to pop them into the right category. So in the chat window, upper and then the numbers. And then in the for middle and lower, you can put the numbers straight after those as well. Can we have 60 seconds on the clock, please, Jim? Okay, we've got some, I was about to say Isabel has pipped everyone to the post, but she's just deleted her message, maybe not feeling confident that she's got them all correct. Let's have a look at the answers then, please, Jim. So in the upper course, we have those interlocking spurs, we've got rapids, we've got waterfalls, and we have gorges. So rapids, waterfalls, and gorges all tend to go together. Then in the middle and lower course, we've got the meanders, we've got those oxbow lakes, we've got levees, and we've got flood plains, okay? Excellent. Well done for those of you that got involved and had a go today. So we have got some co good, correct answers just coming through, actually. So well done, Casey. Well done, Red. All of those were correct. So if you need any further help with your studies on rivers and um, those processes we looked at today, there are lots and lots of resources on the tutor to you website. There's also a brilliant study book that you can see photographs on screen. You can go to the website or you can follow the QR code. Next week, we are talking about the impacts of deforestation. It's our last a physical session before we move to move to human sessions. Oh, it's not um, our last one. Oh. <laughs> but it is for me. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm off to A level. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got one more. I know some students are on half term next week. No naming no yeah. names, Suzanne. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mine but, not. <laughs> uh, but the rest of us will be still hard at work for another week. Yeah. Um oh, of course if you're on half term a great chance to just maybe just sort of dip out of the uh, the holiday and just do half an hour's live stream revision because it's a regular mm -hmm. slot here on a Thursday at 6.30 and obviously beyond half term as well and after Christmas uh, putting some more sessions on to help you get ready for those assessments and mocks and uh, exams next year. Um, that was great, wasn't it? I didn't really get much of a chance to use my uh, my water, my river uh, long course, middle course sound effects. I don't know whether... Oh. <laughs> it's going to make you need a wee, isn't it? I, think it is I was going to say, I'm quite glad you didn't. <laughs> 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 uh, 
that was just a dribble, wasn't it? I don't know where that. Don't know where on the on the profile that was, but it was somewhere. Fantastic. Of course, stuff. Jim. I know, I know. I need to go back and and watch the video again because I didn't get all the questions right. But I do, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Great. Absolutely packed with great information, great content. So I, I highly recommend that uh, you get to maybe go back to the uh, to the replay section. If you go to the tutor to you.net forward slash live section, you can go to the replay section and download the slides as well as watch the, uh, the session again. But also, whilst you're there, take a look at some of the other sessions that uh, Suzanne and Vicky and Alice and the team have put together for GCSE Geography. Absolutely amazing stuff. Almost certainly a lot more there you can maybe have a look at if you're getting ready for some assessments or maybe a mock exam at the end of uh, November or early December. So take a look at that. If you've enjoyed the session live or on replay, please do give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, it really does help us uh, spread the word about these kind of sessions, hopefully to other GCSE geographers. Huge thanks to, uh, well, in particular to Isabel, who was mainly first, but not yeah. always first in the live chat. Mm -hmm. So well done to you and to everybody else who's joined us on the live chat. Fantastic answers tonight. And uh, well, look, we look forward to our, our next session. What do you think, Vicky? Suzanne, anything else to say or is it no, time just, to go have yeah, a rest? Yeah, brilliant work. Yeah, well done, yeah, guys. I think go really, have really good night tonight. Yeah. On fire they were, weren't they? On yeah, fire. they were, definitely. <laughs> no more water sound effects. We're done. So we'll catch you uh, this time next Thursday, 6.30 for the next GCSE Geography live stream. So see you later. Thank you. Bye. See you then. Bye. <laughs>